It's a ball. Oh, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Oh, 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 oh. It's a ball. This is it's like a fruit. This is a fruit ball. This is an orange fruit ball. Yeah. We've been working on these for a while. Oh my gosh, everybody here at Pinson Elementary has been itching to get their hands onto the next step of this process. Um, I introduced this a little while ago and we have been feverishly working, trying to get our bowls completed here at Pinson. Um, gosh, we did a lot, a lot of work on these already. Um, but we're not quite finished. Let me roll in some footage here. Guys, we have been working with plaster molds. We have been working with liquid clay or the technical term is slip, but basically it's the clay that we used for our Christmas ornaments. Um, you remember pound, 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 and then you pick it up and flip it. Yeah, we did that, but um, it's, the liquid form of the clay, the liquid form. And so I made some plaster molds of a little bowl that I found at Walmart that I really liked. And um, we used those molds to create the actual vessel, the actual bowl itself. And you, you're like watching that now. Um, after that, I had to fire them all. I, I don't know if you know how big this school is. It's not terribly big, but it's, 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 it's fairly large amount of students here for just one small kiln and, and, and one small me, you know. So it took me about two weeks to fire all of the bowls. And um, here we stand now with the fired bowls. So let's get started. So here we go with the apple and the orange. And I'm not gonna take up very much time with that. Um, we're gonna start on the bottom of the bowls and either you're gonna paint it all orange for the orange or you're gonna paint it all red for the apple. The only thing here that you have to look at or be mindful of is you don't want any glaze on the bottom. As you can see, that's where your name goes. And you wanna make sure that you glaze everything three times. So important that you put red on there, let it dry, put red on there again, let it dry, and put red on there again. Three times, got it? Three times! So let's say you decided to do the watermelon. Well, <laughs> you're in the right place. First off, um, we do wanna write our names. I don't know if I said that with the apple and the orange, but let's write our names on the bottom of the bowls. I have a special pencil for that. We're gonna use this pencil, however, the regular pencil to draw our design. As you see, I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna draw a line going straight up and then I'm gonna do it again, in effect making a triangle. Now don't worry about like the bottom. I know I said we weren't gonna glaze the bottom. You do need to draw on it, however, because it kind of helps us draw the pattern, okay? So after we did the top triangle, start back in the middle and we're gonna do another triangle going straight down. So triangle going up and a triangle coming straight down. Do the lines have to be perfectly straight? Well, of course they don't. Um, if you actually look at a watermelon, the lines, the pattern is not straight. So that kind of helps us out a little bit. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna twist it and, and, and then you're gonna do another triangle going straight up. And then um, of course you're gonna do another triangle going straight down. And with that, we are done drawing the pattern for the watermelon. So after you get finished drawing it, it is time to glaze it. As you can see, I started with the lightest color green. Always start with your lightest color. Um, go ahead, color in the first section. Um, be mindful though that you don't get any glaze on the bottom of the bowl. It has to stay free of glaze. That whole circle where my name is, free of glaze. Okay, you skip the section and then you go ahead and do the light green in the other section. You gotta skip a section. Every other section is gonna be light green. And please remember, you're gonna do this three times. 
So now that we've gotten the light green done, let's move on over to the dark green. The dark green. <laughs> I'm being a little silly there. Okay, so yeah, um, use the dark green in the spaces that you left yourself. You wanna make sure you do that three times as well and make sure that the green and all glaze in general stays off the bottom of the bowl. Um, I'm actually holding my bowl and like twisting it around. It might help you out to sit your bowl on the table. I'm being very mindful not to put my thumb anywhere where there's wet glaze. And you might forget to do that as you're twisting the bowl around. So um, sitting your bowl on the table might be a good idea while you're glazing. So now let's um, move on over to our super simple strawberry, ladies and gents. As you can see, we're starting with a guideline. That's gonna help us draw our strawberry, but you see how I'm avoiding the forbidden circle area. Nothing goes there but your name. <laughs> okay, next let's move on to drawing the zigzag line. Guys, don't draw this really super tight. Open up that zigzag pattern. Remember, you gotta get a brush in there. Don't make it difficult for yourself, okay? All right, at the top, of course, is gonna be green and at the bottom is going to be red. Now, that guideline, we don't quite need that anymore. So you can go ahead and erase that off, or you can leave it there. Hey, the graphite that's in that pencil is just going to burn off in the kiln anyway. So uh, no big deal there. So now, as far as the glazing goes, Let's go ahead and start with the red and basically let's find a small brush and we want to trace along that zigzag line as close as you can to it in any way. And um, once you go all the way across your bowl, you're gonna go ahead and start filling in. You can get a bigger brush for this. Start filling in the bottom of your strawberry all the way across the bowl, except for, of course, on the forbidden circle area. <laughs> now, once that has finished and it has dried, dried a bit, you wanna go ahead and do the same thing with the green. Small brush again, getting into that zigzag line, and this is where I was talking about. Don't make it hard for yourself. Open that zigzag up so you can get in there very easily, and then fill in that green. Um, now we're doing the dots. Now you really have to make sure that the red is dry before you do this. You do not want to mix glazes. It does not work the same way as paint does. So let's make sure the red is dry before you start the yellow dots. So this is what we're doing today. So now let's go and have fun. Yes, ma'am. What are you doing? What I'm doing? Charting your progress. People on YouTube want to know. How many coats is this for you? My second coat. Second coat. All right. I'm on my second coat. You on your second coat too? What three, number coat? Three. Is your Four, is your three. third? Yeah. But my, 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 my third. That's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty covered. How about you? How about you? Okay. See, I was telling you this. You have to let it dry. If you don't, see these areas right here. The brush is taking the glaze off the glaze of the bowl. Of the you bowl. have to let it dry or you're hurting yourself. You have to let it dry or you're hurting yourself. Now you have let yours dry. 
between coats because that looks like it is very well covered. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Oh, nice. Now, now that definitely looks like three coats of orange. That's that's perfect. That's what you want. That's what you want. I love it. Wait a minute. No, uh-uh. You can't hide now. I've already seen it. I've already seen it. I see orange in the forbidden circle area. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs>